Do you know how to harness the power of social media? That's essentially the question that I'm trying to figure out with our students. It's interesting because when I do this presentation, this particular one with higher level, um, grade 11, 12, CGEP, university and above, um, it's very interesting to see the responses I receive. Often the first question that I ask them is if they uh, or how they use social media. And generally the responses I receive are they socialize, they collaborate with friends, they plan events, they play games, they, you know, they're, they're, they communicate. And they're not bad answers, but those are the general ones that I'll receive. And I ask them, do you use any of these tools and how? And um, often they, um, they'll know Facebook, Twitter, they know their parents are on LinkedIn, they love YouTube, um, they know their moms are on Pinterest, and they know Instagram. Um, but, this, you know, they don't understand the ones that um, they should be using in school, such as Digo or Edmodo. Um, very, you know, very often they don't know those unless they've been introduced by their teachers, which is not that often. And we discuss the challenges that we face with social media. And the ones that I address with the students are cyberbullying, sexting, addiction, and privacy. And we discuss how they are hitting a brick wall when we discuss the negative aspects of so using social media. And they get it. They understand that they're not able to move forward because they're constantly addressing all these negative issues. And they're dying to know how they can move past those negative issues. So we discuss the facts. And I think that it's important to discuss the facts with the students and the teachers because often they don't understand them themselves. So, the first fact that we discuss is that it is illegal to distribute or have in your possession a naked photograph of a minor. And often we go through the vocabulary with them first. So we, we discuss what does distribute mean? What does having in your possession mean? And what is a minor? And they understand that ha you know being a minor is under 18. Distributing means that they're emailing, sending, texting, tweeting, you know, putting on their Facebook feed. And having in their possession means that it's on their computer, it's been emailed to them, it's texted to them. They understand that. However, they really don't understand this concept fully because when I address it to them like this and I say, well, what if I was 17 and you were 17 and I sent an you know, inappropriate photograph of myself to you, would that be okay? And that gray zone to them is so gray that they can't understand that it is wrong and it's illegal. And even if, you, you know, they think, well, well, if I willingly sent it to somebody, then that makes it okay. So it's a concept that we think they understand, but the truth is they really don't and they really need to be taught the, you know, in, in detail what that means. And they don't really understand that the legality of it is actually quite severe and that, you know, um, you know, the lawmakers are coming and policymakers are coming down on, on these issues. And, um, you know, the, the, you know, and I also tell them, well, imagine that, you know, your grandma, um, you, you Googled your grandma and you found a naked photograph of her when she was 17 or 16 or 14 and they they freak out because they don't realize that that could be them one day they could be their their grandma they could be a grandma and have a naked photograph of them available for the world to see on the internet and it's a concept that's very strange to them but very possible so it's so important that that conversation is had with their with students the next fact that we discuss is privacy and the, you know this seems like such a, a such a you know forward sort of uh, fact that whatever you post online is never private. But the truth is they don't understand that because there's a false sense of privacy when using social media, especially when it comes to Facebook. Because the kids think, oh well, my privacy settings are set up so that nobody can see my you know my pictures. But then we go through it and I ask the kids, well. How many friends do you have on Facebook? 100, 200, 300, 400. And we could go up to a 1,200. I've had 1,200 in some of the classes that I've went to visit with students. And, and I'll say to the kids, how do you know, how do you know 1,200 people? And they think, well, you know, they don't think anything of it. And I say, well, what if somebody, you know, do you really know all those 1,200 people? Do you really trust them? What if somebody took a screenshot of something that you posted? Would it then be private? 
There is no such thing as privacy on the internet. And I have to explain it to them because they really genuinely don't realize this. And as a parent, it's very important that you realize this as well, that the, the internet is not a private place and they, they are not required to have privacy on the internet. This isn't their diary under their bed. This is not a this is not a private place. This is a public forum. So there should never be privacy, even as a parent with, with your child online. So I tell them, think about these three things. One, would you want your mother to see it? You know, and often that's not enough. And then I ask them the second, would your grandmother be embarrassed by what you're about to post? And that may hit a nerve. But the third thing that I ask them is usually the one that hits them the most. And that is, would it hurt you later on from getting a job? And oftentimes I get a great response from that, especially in the older grades, because they realize that they're posting things that are so completely inappropriate that potentially those things could hurt them later on in their lives from getting a job or getting into college. So, you know, then it gets them thinking. So I tell them, go home, do a cleanup, do a social media cleanup. And remember, only post the things that you want the world to see. And I get good response from that when we have the discussion with the students. So then I say, okay, so how do we move forward? And we discuss social media men, and they love it. And I tell them, well, social media man knows his, he has superpowers, and he knows how to use social media to build his digital identity. And I ask the kids, do you own yours? And quite frankly, they, they have no idea. This is not a concept that they've really thought through. And it's interesting because these are kids who have to worry on a day-to-day -day about their, their lives and being a teenager and facing you know their ex-boyfriend or the boy that broke their heart or the girl that they like but doesn't like them back. And they have all this anxiety when they get to school. But the truth is when they go home, they don't even realize it. But they have to think about their identities online as well. And it's stressful for them. And it's not something that we as teenagers, the older generation, the teachers, the parents, that we ever had to deal with. And so this is a huge amount of stress for these kids. And it's hard for them. But they have to start thinking about it because it's so important for them as they grow older and they move on with their lives and they are looking for jobs and they are going out in the workforce because they can hide from this digital age. They are online, meaning they are visible online and they can't escape that. So I ask them to Google themselves and I think that everybody should be Googling themselves every day. Well, okay, not every day, but on a regular basis, you should know what's being said about you. So I ask them, what do you find about yourself? Hopefully good things, not bad things. And the one that worries me, the, you know, maybe not the most, but equally as bad as bad things, is not having anything. And the kids always ask me, why, miss, why is that so bad? And I say, well, if you don't have anything about yourself online, and someone decides to write something about you, and it's not good. What's going to show up when somebody Googles you? And they realize it, and they see it, because if you have nothing a bit about you online and someone else writes something, then you don't own your identity anymore. Somebody else owns it. So I would rather the kids have things on there, build their identity, have great things on there, than you know, using even if it's just social media, than having nothing, because at least that way then they will own their identity. So then I show them this video, which I'm not going to show right now. You can see on your own. But essentially, it shows my digital identity. And all it is is essentially my you know, Twitter feed, my LinkedIn feed, um, Google+, my website, my blog. It shows the things that I contribute. And it's positive things. And I'm able to do that using social media. So I'm able to take ownership of my digital identity. And I'm able to do this because I think differently about how I use the web. I don't just use it to socialize. I don't just use it to communicate. I don't just use it to do planning. I use it to build my digital resume, to have a portfolio online. Okay, I have a blog. I'm able to brand myself. I use social media to learn. And I want the kids to begin to think about doing this. They need to think outside of the box because the truth is, and this is the crazy thing, that no longer is that paper resume that they're going to fill out and hand to their employer important anymore. What's going to be important? 
What is going to be so important for them as they enter the workforce, as these kids coming up, is what is available when their future, you know, college recruiter or their future boss Googles them is what they find, you you know, when they Google their names. And that's going to be huge. And it's so important that they start doing this. And it's also important that they begin to think about, you know, how they can use the web um, to, to eliminate the four walls of their home and school because now they, they can be global contributors. They can contribute to the rest of the world. And they can collaborate with others from around the world. And they can think of ways that they can affect change in the world. They don't have to have these bristle boards or poster boards around the building to get a message out. They can have use a hashtag. They can set up a web page. They can do so much, but they need to start harnessing the power of the media that's available to them. And so then the last thing we discuss is how they can improve their search score. And this is huge, okay? And I'm going to give you a few tips that you can start thinking about for yourself, for your children, for your te you know, for the teachers, for the administrators, because you need to start using social media in a positive way. And here are some ways that I've given that you can start to begin to do this. The first is I say cre create your for yourself a Google account. Because the nice thing about the Google account is that it interlinks with other accounts. You can have a Google account that you can sign up for other accounts and sign in using one account. So it helps you organize your other accounts. It's wonderful. And, and Google tools are phenomenal. There's just so much you can do with them. And then I say use social media positively. You should be on LinkedIn. If you're a professional, you should. That's a great way to start your digital identity because and then it'll show up in your search engine optimi in the search engine optimization. Use Instagram. You creating a YouTube channel and contributing to YouTube is great because when you when you do that you're able to link it to other other places such as your your blog or your Twitter feed. And Twitter is probably one of the easiest and best ways to 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 connect with other people and also build your digital identity. And I say, create your online space. For, for my own kids, my daughter's five, my son is 21 months, I own their URL, I own their, la their first and last name .com. And I'm doing this because I recognize that as they grow older, this will be so huge in a competitive market for them to own their own digital space online. And you know, one of the ways you can do that is have an about.me page. That's wonderful. You can link it to your blog or your, your website. And the other place that I love is brandyourself.com. And this is actually from brandyourself.com and it explains how search engine optimization works. And it helps, um, basically one of the biggest factors that the search engine optimization, the SEO looks at, are how you're uh, interlinked through other sites. So that's, this is essentially what, what um, when you look at the Google search and your name comes up first, or what, what comes up first, this is how the search engine is able to distinguish what keywords come up first. And uh, the bi a big part of it is rated in incoming links. So using social media allows you to link your key name, your name, your, you know, the things that you want to get out very well because it, 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 it is cons consistently linked to other places. And that's where, you know, I lead to the last part. And I say to link everything you do. So that means if you use your Google account, create a YouTube channel. That's a wonderful way to link things. And then link that video to your blog or your website or your Tumblr page. And then link your blog posts to your, to your, your, your you know, and tweet those out and use hashtags then again to create even more links. And you're consistently linking things. So you're able to build uh, in your, in the SEO so that you're, keyword your name for instance which could be your essential the keyword that you're trying to move up the search engine optimization is growing and growing and it's getting more links attached to it so it'll it'll come up in the search engine then you want to create profiles your grandmother would be proud of you should have things that only that you want the world to see and last Post and post often. When you keep your online presence known and updated, you're more likely to have positive things that are going to show up on your in the search engine. So essentially, these are my tips for owning your digital identity. I hope that my 15-minute tutorial was worth your time. Thank you so much.